act together. Yes! Even the rooftop shufflers excited about this. Hey Dan, guess where I am? You won't believe this one. I'm here to see Santa Claus. Ah, you don't believe me, I know it. I'll be back with you in a little bit after I see him, but I'm gonna go in and find him now. We'll be back to you, see you soon, Dan. Ho, 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 this ought to be good. Ooh, that's not so good. That looks like a mess, actually. And as you remember, we brought you something a little bit different each time. Here's something a really bit different. Hey. That's the promoter of the year right there, Lyle DeVore, behind the wheel of the 61 CD Coville throwback. The Sunflower 50, this will be just as interesting. One thing we like to do here on Inside Northeast Racing, and that's introduce you to some of the drivers you might not otherwise know. Back to take a look at the Sunflower 50, where a good time was had by all. Here's some mem memories for you right there. Hey Dan, can I join the band? Well, it does seem like you're gonna have a little more time on your hands. In our Remember Me segment, we'll take a look back, turn back the hands in time, and look at this, some of the racers from days gone by. Hey Dan, can I join the band? Of course you can, it's Miller time. Hey, hey Dan, Dan, can, can we, we join, join the band? band? Three generations of Higbees? Are you kidding me? And of course, as far as salutes go, a three wide salute as we salute the racers that make our sport what it is. Hey, a gender reveal? What the heck? You think you've seen it all? Were you aware there was such a thing as racing's Playboy Bunny? Well, stay tuned, because we're in search of. Hello, Santa. Well, hello, Jim. Well, Dan, do you believe now? Let's check back in and see what's going on over at the Sunflower 50. Chip Constantino and Ryan Pepicelli going to bring the field to Joe Christmas. Green flag and the Sunflower 50 is underway. Trouble on lap number one. Brandon Jacobson and Travis Wickback are around, and that's going to bring out yellow. Hey Dan, check this out. Oh yeah, that was a good one. All right, I'm Travis Whitback. I race sportsman here at Albany Saratoga Speedway. Uh, I guess the question was if we could change one thing in motorsports, what would it be? And uh, probably have to say the cost. It's uh, not easy for us sportsman guys to do it. A lot of people have been seeing it recently and uh, it's hard to keep up with the Joneses. So if that's the one thing I could change, that would be it. Hi, I'm Camden Duffy, and if I could change anything about local motorsports, I'd try to involve the kids a little bit more and, you know, have them come and look at the cars and drivers talk to them a little bit, show them what it's really like, have them sit in the car and stuff. I think that'd be pretty sweet. Hi, my name is Corky Warner. Um, tonight I'm racing the 21C, uh, Brian Calabrese Owen, um, in the limited sportsman division. Uh, I started out my racing career at Glen Ridge with Ray Serafin. Uh, can't thank him enough for getting me into this. Uh, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here right now. He uh, bought me a slingshot. I got my dad's permission. Eventually, we uh, I actually got a sportsman ride from somebody else. And I said, if, hey, if you want to give another kid an opportunity, here you go. And kind of gave it back to him, let him get another kid an opportunity and race a sportsman. And then that got just uh, separated and then he offered me help for helping him out so I can't thank Brian Calabrese enough for this opportunity and we're having fun oh it's it's definitely different people people are like you race I'm like yeah I'm for only being 13 years old it is pretty crazy and my like my dad said I have built-in talent I can go out and not wheel anything because I've only raised two things but he said I have pretty built-in talent 
Chip Constantino, Brady Gill, Eric Mack, the top three. Green flag back out in the air. Davis inside, Tanner Warner. Warner trying to cross him over. Clean and green, putting lap number one on the board, finally. And on the move is David Schilling. Tanner Warner makes trouble. Tomac to Waltschuk. Collects Brett Morrison. So actually right now we're just getting the, uh, the scales level and if you look you can see the red lines. And that just tells us that our scales are level. So now that we uh, adjusted the ride heights we'll set it back down. Just got to finish air pressures really quick. So now we're going to roll the car onto the scales, check our left side percentage, our rear percentage, and uh, our wedge and make adjustments when we have to. Good. So the wedge that we want, is, it was too high, so we're gonna make adjustments and get the wedge back down. Go two turns down on the left front, two turns down on the right rear. So you know where that is, okay? So mark it with like the edge of the tape. Spin that around two times so it goes down. So now we've got wedge set, car set, ride height set. Um, I like to measure my center to centers and then I put them on the spring smasher and see what my loads are. And if I don't like the loads, I'll adjust them a little bit. Sharing knowledge, that's an understatement. The Sand Lake Slingshot, the King of the Valley, many call him the professor. So periodically I do get, you know, some new people starting out in the sport, uh, you know, that, that comes up to me and asks, you know, different advice. Uh, and right now I'm kind of going through it with my own son, Montgomery, who's, you know, who's starting out, he, you know, he started out with a sportsman car at uh, Devil's Bowl. And now he's to the point where he's running a 358 car at, at Lebanon Valley. So, um, you know, I can remember back when I started, I, I started warming up a car when I was like 15 years old at Lebanon Valley. Um, and our driver at the time was Chuck Ely, but the information that he had given me as a kid, um, just starting out, I mean, scared to death, you know, uh, I didn't want to, you know, wreck anybody. I didn't want to be in anybody's way. But, you know, a few things that he had told me years ago is, you know, when you start racing and you go down a straightaway, make sure that you go straight down a straightaway. One of the worst things that he told me that I could do is change lanes because even, you know, you're not going to be fast to start with. Um, so if you just maintain the line down a straightaway, the faster guys will figure out a way uh, to get around you. But what they can't, you know, compete with is somebody that's moving around. It's like a moving bullseye. So, you know, what I told Montgomery is make sure that when you come out the corner, you know, if you're on the bottom, you stay on the bottom and you go straight down a straightaway. Now, I'm not saying if you're the fastest car there, you can go wherever you want, but until you get up to speed, you know, you're not going to do that. So, you know, lane changing is big, uh, especially when somebody's not ready for it and you're not up to speed and you're not at the same speed going down a straightaway as, as somebody else, you know, and I try to tell him to be respectful. You know, he's going to get lapped, you know, move down to the bottom. If that's where the flagger wants you, hold your line again, make sure that, you know, uh, if you're running the bottom and you come off the bottom, make sure you stay in the bottom. Don't drift halfway out down, the, you know, halfway down the straightaway and get in the leader's way. Um, and there'll be a point where you'll get up to speed and you won't be a lap car and you won't feel like you're in a way. And, uh, and then at that point, you're going to be able to, you know, make some moves that you didn't think you were going to be able to, to make when you were first starting. Um, you know, be, be respectful the best that you can. I mean, you're not there to give away spots either, but, um, you know, be respectful. That'll be returned to you when you get going and somebody else is, is starting. Um, at least you will have set a good example. Uh, for, for some of the other people that are starting. Uh, and, you know, try to ask some questions. If you got a problem, don't be afraid to walk up to the, to the person that's winning all the races. Typically, they're willing to help. And, 
you know, they don't want you in their way either. So they want you to be, you know, a car that's stable and making good consistent laps too. They'll figure out a way around you, but don't be afraid to ask people for help. Even if it's, you know, a driver, you know, a chief mechanic, an owner, most of those people, you know, when I first started, uh, I could walk up to Jack Johnson or Lou Lazaro or Dave Lape. Um, all those guys were always very good with me when I was young and, and starting out. Um, never did I ever not have them give me information, you know. So uh, ask a lot of questions, be respectful, and just keep working, working, working. Matt Chavis on the back bumper of Chip Constantino now. your eyes on Schilling and Mack trying to work their way up from the back. And now here's Matt Chavis inside Chip Constantino. A battle for the lead right here in front. Our new race leader for the first time today. Rockingham, North Carolina's Matt Chavis. Jones to the front in the Sunflower 50. Schilling and Mack trying to get back up to the field right now. Davis already stretching his hands and approaching lap traffic with him. Mike Coffey Jr. Oh, trouble! Big trouble on the front straightaway. Brady Gill into the hay bales and the yellow lights are on. Hi, I'm Jim Duncan, driver of the KFC 771 Street Stock at Albany, Saratoga. And if I could have any one wish about the upstate racing, I would, uh, I'd look for common and consistent rules. All right, I'm pretty happy here at Albany, Saratoga. I think Lyle puts on a great show, does a great job. Um, I wouldn't change anything here. I'm driver number three, Kyle Lanfear, and uh, I have a winning streak right now of seven. And we're going to see if we can bring that momentum into this week. And uh, I think that if we had to bring something into racing in the Northeast, I think we should bring late models into racing. They're all over the U.S. and I've seen them down south and all over the place and I got a buddy that races one and I think that they should bring them up here. They had a race a couple weeks ago at the Ridge and it'd be cool to see them here. I think it'd be a really cool deal. Claude Horde, a driver who left a lot of memories, had a lot of success in the great Northeast, Lebanon Valley Speedway on the CVRA, one of the guys that were really fun to watch. Then there's Jim, before he turned gray. My name is Dylan Stoyer, and uh, we're here at uh, Utica Rome today, but... Uh, I started racing probably about seven years ago and I started in the slingshot division and uh, I feel like that taught me a lot to start out and just, uh, you know, they're a handful to drive and I think that's what teaches you a lot to uh, be able to hop in something like this and do well. Out of turn four, checkered flag is in the air for Dylan Stoyer. My favorite track is probably Orange County. We choose a lot of uh, competition shows, you know, there's... We, we rarely go to a week show, you know, we uh, we try to choose the best races with the most talented drivers and the highest car counts because I feel like it teaches us the most, you know, when you race against good guys, it teaches you a lot. Hi, this is Dan Sigwin. Uh, one thing I would uh, change about racing upstate New York is make it year-round. Find a way to, so we can race all year. Hello, it's Big Jim for Dirt Track Digest. I'm standing here at Mad Max. Filling in tonight for Peter Braden at Albany, Saratoga. Max, what is it like to come up here and, and race on this surface? Uh, it's a pretty cool track. You know, years ago I used to be pretty good here, and then 
Um, took a few years off to race asphalt, and now I can't really seem to do very well here for some reason in my own car. So we'll see how Peter's is, I guess. But um, yeah, I struggled here the last couple of starts, and um, you know, Peter uh, had his hand injury. He had got operated on yesterday, and called me and said, "Hey, like I'm not gonna be able to do this." And, trust you and you want to go drive it sure so I don't have anything else to do on a Wednesday so um, you know at least it helps him out and uh, you know maybe it'll help me figure something out too when you travel and do as many different tracks as you do and as much as you've been doing in recent weeks are there things you can take from those tracks and learning and the different weather conditions we've experienced in the Northeast that carry over when you come somewhere like this that you're not a regular too? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, just these cars have came such a long way in the last couple of years with the coils and you just learn a lot of different weather conditions, you know, tracks and, um, you know, dry, slick, ab abrasive tracks. And then uh, you have, you know, hammer down race tracks with uh, some of the weather we've had lately. And it all takes something a little different. And the sweet spot is so small now and to really hit it and everybody's so close now, you really got to be on your game every night. And you see those same couple of people do it. and. Uh, the rest of us are just, uh, you know, trying to catch them every night. So um, I think, you know, jumping around and, uh, you know, going to different places and um, it, I think it helps. And then this is a place I definitely need to get better on. So uh, I saw it as a win-win and, um, you know, help him. And you know, like I said earlier, I hope it'll help me too. Hi, my name is Mike Baker. I race at Albany Saratoga Speedway. I race a limited sportsman and I also race a pro stock. If I could change one thing about the sport, it would be the cost of the engine. Hello, I am Jordan Hill. Um, this is my fourth race at Albany Saratoga Speedway. Um, the past years I've been racing at, um, with go-karts at Turkey Trot Raceway, is my home track. I was doing that for roughly 16, 17 years um, and we figured we'd try something out with the big cars. What I like about auto racing is uh, the speed and the adrenaline. Um, I like the competition um, and you don't see many girls in here and I kind of want to get more into that. Um, I've just always loved cars my whole life. My dad raced uh, street stocks and he got into karting, which got me into it. And then an opportunity fell in our hands with the big cars and we decided to take it. So the green flag coming back out of the air and the Sunflower 50 is back underway. Chip Constantino trying to hang with Javis on the outside lane and I tell you what, did a pretty good job of it. Davis not pulling away just yet. Schilling still fit, trying to track down look at it before. Now things are starting to breathe a little bit. Some of the congestion removed from the race track. Chip Constantino starting to overdrive the car a little bit, trying to find something to track down Javis. He might be in danger of falling into this Scabia's one. Scabia all over the back of Constantino, trying to take second spot away. He gets wider and wider with his line at a turn number four. Your eyes on Constantino, he's no longer able to keep the car down. And once again, lap traffic about to become a factor. David's going to come up on Mike Coffey Jr. to put him a lap down. Coffey on the bottom, he's right in Javis's way. Javis gets around him. Oh, hang on, Mike! Here's taking a look back at some of the sleek body lines on some of the old stock cars. And that'll move us into some of the technical side of things with one of the smartest guys behind the garage door. Jerry Higby, owner of Higpab Chassis. Uh, we produce about 30 or 40 cars a year. We've done about 450 of them in the last 10 or 11 years. And uh, today I'm going to show you a little bit about the newer, older versus the older style chassis. You know, a lot of stuff you're seeing in the headlines now are, you know, looking to outlaw left side panel bars versus right side panel bars. So for all you guys on the couch and people that aren't 
into this stuff as much as we may be. Uh, I'll give you kind of an idea. This is an older older chassis. It's about five years old. This is my son Cody Higby's car. He races, uh, just put a 358 in to start racing in Orange County. Um, and because it's an older car, we still have the what used to be the right side panner bar mount on the frame still, okay? We used to uh, have a the, the, the panner bar that located the, the rear end right to left was mounted on the right side and controlled how much and, and, and how the car rolled and picked up side bite. So about four or five years ago, uh, some other brands and, and, and some guys started experimenting with the left side and picking up a little bit of speed, picking up more side bite. And over here uh, is the left side setup that you can look at and everything was moved from over there to over here. This seemed to pick up some lap times, pick up a lot of side bite, made the cars drive quite a bit different. Um, we started getting rid of the torsion racks. This torsion rack is really not in use now. We have covers over it where we used to have torsion arms down here and torsion bars. And we've gone to more of a coil spring assembly, which would be here. Um, made the cars drive a little bit more rigid, um, but, but having a lot more side bite kind of making the cars a little bit more violent to drive and a little bit tougher to drive. Um, today's cars, when we're building, 99% of what we're producing now is a brand new car here. Um, they, they don't even have the mounts on them for the right side anymore. So when we're looking at uh, some of the news today saying some tracks are looking to outlaw left side painter bars and things like that, most of the cars being built today, they don't even have it in there. They don't have torsion racks in them anymore. It would be a little bit complicated at this point to outlaw that kind of thing. So um, it's going to be a little bit of a different off season this year because I'm, I'm hearing more and more talks about it. Her Grandview maybe is talking about outlawing it and stuff. And Grandview and Big Diamond with the NASCAR sanction and, and their engine rules package and stuff like that, they're on an island. And they can they can do a lot of what they want to do without affecting what a lot of the dirt car stuff and all that is. So it'd be interesting if they did outlaw it, with, which I'm hearing. Um, it would be a lot for other people to look at and see how it goes for them before dirt car and other people can decide to do it you know we've seen some people say some of the racetracks are a little bit drier dustier and ripped up and stuff like that And there's been an argument maybe it's the left side panner bar uh, that's producing it because there's so much more side grip the cars are digging in more and digging tracks up and stuff like that but I, I don't know if there's anything to that I really don't think that's the case I just think that the the racing's become a little bit uh, different since the left side panner bars I think it's um it's going more toward the, the younger generation. I think a lot of us older guys are having a little bit more trouble learning to do it. The last few weeks, um, I've noticed Danny Johnson just kind of started really getting a lot faster now than he had been. He's figuring it out. Uh, Brett Hearns kind of made somewhat of a comeback in Orange County, getting some cars going a little bit faster. Alan Johnson's kind of uh, gotten into it. We have our customers uh, upstate like Steve Payne. Um, he's kind of kept a um, he's got the left side panel bar on it, but he's kind of kept the torsion bar type of a uh, uh, setup on it to make the car ride a little bit more friendly, not as rigid. Um, it's been tough because guys are hitting their heads a lot on the seats with all the, the grip that they have and tracks getting a little bit rough. So uh, technology and things have changed so much the last five years. Uh, it's just different. So the future remains to be seen what happens. I'm Jeremy Pitts. I drive the 27 big block. Modified at Albany Saratoga Speedway. I've been doing it 22 years. Um, got a couple championships in the Sportsman, and I actually moved up from Pro Stock. I started in Pro Stock. The guys that helped me out, they're Bob Coons and uh, Raymond, Marty. The veteran out of Cohoes, New York, in the Cindy Lou Motorsports Bonded Building Materials number 20J, Jack Gentile. Looks like it won't be enough. Walk into the show or Jack Gentile, your winner. Second. Uh, Jackie's actually the reason my old man actually got into racing. We always watched, but uh, he came racing out of our crew at first, out of our garage, and uh, the rest has been history. I've known him a long time. I like racing always Saratoga. It's home. It's 20 minutes away, and uh, most of the time the track's in, in pretty good shape. I was to try something else, I would say a super late model would be probably my dream car. Hey, I'm Jordan Modiano. I drive the Autism Awareness 4M Pro Stock at Albany Saratoga Speedway. If I could change one thing about Northeast Racing, I'd make mandatory driver's meetings, but they're not run by the track promoters. Every week a different driver's got to come up and run the meeting. That's what I would change. This is um, Shane Henderson, number nine. Uh, I drive Pro Stock and Northeast Dirt Car. Uh, if I had one thing I could change, I'd say put everybody back on Hoosiers because uh, 
they ain't nobody traveling as much as they used to and uh, all the fields are cut in half so that's what i do and now we'll reveal the identity of racing's playboy bunny jan was an accomplished artist and she had a passion for a different kind of horsepower she was an expert horsewoman who adored riding side saddle in the late 1960s after she graduated from college jan moved into a house and then an apartment with some friends Back then, the Playboy Mansion was a big thing, and she always loved the Playboy bunnies. So to decorate for Christmas one year, around 1967, she drew a full-size Playboy bunny holding the words Merry Christmas and attached it to their door. It was so popular, she began drawing more and sending them to friends that were stationed in Vietnam as a little way to help brighten their day. Jan Olson Floyd passed away in 2013 after battling cancer. Her Playboy bunny rides in her memory on Santa Bob Kilburn 77J, which can be seen racing weekly at the Devil's Bowl Speedway. And now we get to meet A.J. Walters, the runner-up in points in the Pro Stock Division at Utica Rome. Hey guys, A.J. Walters, driver of the 22W Pro Stock, the fondest speedway today, running the Hondo. Good car count, good heat race, car is good. And I want to send a special thanks to RCK Motorsports, A1 Installers, my brother and my nephew, Stephen Carter, Mike and Dawn, Normoil Photography, Big Hook Towing, VBR Parts and Fabrication, Schultz Auto Center, and Ted's Body Shop. Thank you to Normoil Racing and Yakabuchi family. Wouldn't be able to do without you guys. We got a... Uh, we picked up our first win a couple weeks ago at Utica Rome. Uh, been running pretty good up there. We're hoping to turn everything around for down here and learn a little something. Green flag back out in the air here. Oh, three wide for second. Scavia, Whitbeck, and Constantino in a dogfight for runner up. Whitbeck hits the hay bale. They're still messing around in the back. But it's all behind Matt Chavis. Chavis has got it figured out. Two laps left to go. For Matt Chavis. And now the white flag. White flag for Chavis. Stavia, Constantino, Whitbeck, Epicelli. Your top five. Checkered flag, Matt Chavis wins the Sunflower 50. Nick Scavia, Chip Constantino, Travis Whitback, Ryan Pepicelli, Brady Gill, Cole Nelson, Tanner Warner, Mike Coffey, Brandon Jacobson, John Dumas. Well, that's going to wrap up this segment of Inside Northeast Racing. It's hard to believe it was 10 years since our last one, but I believe the band's back together. For Big Jim, I'm Dan Martin. Thanks for watching, and for all the other members of the band, Stay tuned for our next segment coming up soon. There is a taste of time, sweetest honey, down the sand. Just run.